everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure indeed uh, to welcome Mr. Lee Yong, I hope that's correctly pronounced, yes. Director General of UNIDO. And uh, we are going to, I think, have a very interesting session with him. Uh, this, pro this event today is part of the uh, collaboration with Irish Aid, which is much appreciated over quite a number of years now. And so Sarah McGrath is going to say a few words to, to kick us off. Thank you. Thank you very much and good afternoon and thanks very much to you all for, for being here. Um, it's a great honour uh, to welcome the Director General of the United Nations Industrial Development Organisation, or UNIDO, as you'll be hearing a lot about uh, over the course of the next while, Mr Lee Young to Dublin, and I would like to thank the IIEA for hosting this event today. Ireland has been a member of UNIDO since 1980, and our engagement is led through our, uh, through our mission to the UN in Vienna. As I'm sure you all know, Ireland has recently launched a new international development policy, A Better World, um, and it is partly in that context that Director General Lee is here on this visit, and we've had a number of very interesting conversations already today about how UNIDO's platform and ideas and plans for the future link in with, uh, with what the government is planning to do over the next number of years. So maybe I'll just say a couple of words about that new policy um, to, to set a context. That new policy sets out our vision for Ireland's contribution to international development looking ahead to 2030. It's a clear statement of Ireland's commitment to global citizenship to helping make our world a better place to live for others and indeed for ourselves. It focuses on the sustainable development goals and reaching the furthest behind first, wherever they may be. In a least developed country, um, and UNIDO works with a lot of least developed countries, particularly, uh, particularly on the continent of Africa, whether on a small island state vulnerable to climate change or individual victims of conflict or humanitarian crisis. A Better World builds on Ireland's strength as a development partner and the strong international reputation we've maintained since the establishment of our official development programme. It's a bold statement of what Ireland will do to contribute to a more peaceful, equal and sustainable world in response to the underlying message of the Sustainable Development Goals, as we said, to leave no one behind. It commits Ireland to scaling up resources and capacity across four policy priorities, gender equality, reducing humanitarian need, climate action and strengthening governance in development countries. It's a whole of government policy and commits us to intensifying our contribution to development cooperation, but also changing how we work both bilaterally and multilaterally. And since I am the director in charge of UN and international financial institutions, I'm particularly interested to hear what the director general has to say today, because I think for a country like Ireland, our commitment to multilateralism in both political terms and in policy terms has to be carried through by walking the walk as well as talking the talk. And we understand as well, I think, as a small country, that it is only through partnership and collective action that we can really make changes in the world. I'll no, now hand you over to our distinguished speaker who will discuss, amongst other things, I know, UNIDO's mission of inclusive and sustainable industrial development and its alignment to Ireland's international development policy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah. Um, uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, uh, all the participants. I just would like to thank Institute of International and European Affairs for hosting this event as part of uh, Development Day series of lectures. I particularly appreciate Mr. Tom uh, Arnold uh, for his very, very kind uh, introduction and also the hosting this uh, event for me. Uh, I also am very happy that uh, Donna uh, Butler and also uh, Dan O'Brien also here join us. Mm, uh, I noticed the, the lady, uh, the counselor, uh, Madame Xiaoming from uh, Chinese Embassy. Uh, I very much appreciate all your participation. Uh, today, I just would like to uh, report to you, uh, share with you some of the uh, operation strategy of uh, United Nations Industri Industrial Development Organization as a 
only one organization solely focus, focused on the industrial development among more than 80 UN agencies. Uh, I'm honored to be here today in Dublin uh, to uh, enjoy the site scene and also important meeting today with uh, uh, Minister uh, Dannon, also uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Julie Cinnamon, uh, public, private, and now academia. Uh, I'm especially glad to be here soon after Irish government has published uh, A Better World. This document, you all know, is uh, ambitious and a well thought uh, of the vision what Ireland wants to achieve for the people who are most in need in the developing world. And the uh, priorities laid out in the policy also reflect the best of modern development thinking by addressing the most pressing issues, particularly gender equality, climate action, and uh, while reducing humanitarian and also uh, strengthening the governance continue to play the prominent role. And uh, these are issues which are almost central to how you need to implement its mandate, which is a inclusive and a sustainable industrial development. Uh, this is a, a little bit different compared with what we've done 50 years ago, uh, industrial development. Because uh, powerful two words, inclusiveness and sustainability is very, very important, which now we appreciate the international support become the SDG goal nine. Out of 17 goals, it's a goal nine, inclusive and sustainable industrialization, infrastructure innovation. Uh, we are very uh, happy now we go ahead with uh, this uh, important mandate uh, UNIDO and Ireland have a deep history of successful and very impactful cooperation. Almost 40 years ago, uh, friends, colleagues, UNIDO organized a training program on the free industrial zone for a Chinese delegation, a Shannon free zone, country, uh, County Clare. And this group included the, Mr. Zhang Zeming, at that time as a senior vice minister level official and in charge of the state import export and nutrition who would later rise to be uh, the president of China. And the lessons that uh, this group brought back to China were invaluable and contributed to greatly to the economic boom that that followed for China, and that was the year in 1980. And UNIDO's work over the past four decades can be traced in the direct line from the Shannon to our modern flagship programs, which is called the Program for Country Partnership, because uh, we know the mandate, we know the SDG Goal 9, but we need to operationalize it. This is the most critical for us, but how to do it based on the traditional way of doing business? Not possible because of individual projects. And I visited so many countries in Africa, but all the meetings I listened, those leaders, prime ministers, they asked DG Lee, please help us to de develop the industry. We would like to have an industrialization. Very few friends, colleagues. Please give us one project, two projects. No time changed because they look at the industrialization. They look at the most useful way to lead a country for poverty reduction, job creation. This is what we learn, but how to do it? We need to be a little bit more innovative. And we thought 
Japan gone through the Republic of Korea gone through the Tiger Dragon gone through the manufacturing. You know. They learn from the Shannon special economic zones. But why not you need to move ahead with uh, support for industrial strategy. Let the country move ahead with uh, industrial strategy, cover the whole industrial sector, and uh, which is one important component of the three sectors, agriculture industry service, that's an economic term. And so we look around the country and the better, and then finally we find out we should develop a kind of operation. We call it partnership for country, uh, uh, pro program for country partnership. And we help the government to develop a strategy in line with their national priorities and work together with World Bank, with uh, regional development banks, and to support industrial strategies. Uh, for example, like Ethiopia. We look at the country situation, they focus on agriculture, because it's agro-roaring, the most uh, least developed country uh, agro-roaring. And they mentioned the agro-processing, leather, and textile. So we started with uh, three pillars, three areas. And I'm very happy government support that, World Bank support that, African Development Bank support that. We reach agreement. Now, after three and a half years, they would like to expand this coverage. And they would like to add chemistry, light industry, pharmaceuticals. So they expand the coverage of their, because their capacity, their, their vision increased, expanded. So this is a kind of program we are applying in seven countries in Africa. Now uh, Senegal, Ethiopia, plus uh, Morocco, plus Egypt, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, and uh, Zambia, Rwanda. And there are 13 countries applying for this uh, program. I'm very happy in Asia, Cambodia, and in uh, uh, Lac region, Peru, and also uh, Central Asia, Kyrgyzstan. And then more countries also would like to have. And why I introduce this um, uh, PCP to you, because uh, I think this is a useful way starting work with the top government, leaders' commitment to industrialization, to industrial development in the country. Nine ministries can work together. I'm used to, to be a government official, Ministry of Finance. I understand if two ministries can work together, it's good, difficult. And the three ministry work together, it's a big, big challenge. Four ministry, daunting task, maybe, yeah. But now we move the how many ministry working together? 11 or 12 ministries in Ethiopia, they work together. In Peru, five ministries working together. Because what? Start from the president, prime minister, then the line ministries, and the one leading ministry, Ministry of Industry or Trade, take the lead. Then they can implement that uh, very coordinately. We have a donor coordination committee and donors being brought together to let them know what's PCP, what's a specific area. And resources will be contributing more closely to the target, national priority. So I'm very happy uh, this uh, be moved very smoothly, and also for Africa industrialization, I really would like to mention that. Why always mention Africa industrialization? I, I used to be an economist. I used to be a CPA, certified public accountant. 
working the government, so work bilateral don uh, donor, and but now we talk about 2030 development. I talked to the CB meeting, Secretary General. I said, if the 2030 development agenda, 15 years, we would like to achieve that, Africa must be put on the top agenda. Why? 47 least developed country. 36 of them located in Africa. If a 36 country cannot move up, change, transform from the bottom line of industrial level upward, and the new industrial revolution coming, the country talk about industrial 4.0, artificial intelligence, but this group of country is still struggling with basic industry. What will, will be the result? This is uh, my thinking. It's not a complicated paper. It's a simple react, simple fact. So we scale up operation. I thanks to the international efforts. G20, 2016, put Africa industrialization, least developing industrialization as a regular agenda. We tasked to prepare the report for G20. And after G20 and 2016, the UN General Assembly adopted a resolution, third industrial development decade for Africa. This resolution drafted by UNIDO together with the African Union Commission, African Development Bank, and adopted, adopted by General Assembly unanimously. Bilateral Japan, Take and for so many years, of course, China, Fokai, and the India. You know, India just completed the, the uh, new round of the cooperation between them for Africa industrialization and donor community. You see, Germany, Italy, uh, Nordic countries, and many EU as uh, one of the largest regional donors support UNIDO to support Africa industrialization. They have a African Development Day. They have a Industrial Day every year. So I think that this is a time for us to think about that, how to support Africa industrialization. But what we are doing is also, I appreciate just now, the, Tom, you asked me how we work with them, with the government side, and maybe you know, we help them to develop a conducive environment for FDI coming. Investment law is how to streamline the process to prepare the conducive environment, sound environment for invest, investor, FDI coming. And also, we work together with World Bank, those are big, big financial, and most importantly, FDI, private company, private sector. So we establish a very close relationship with those association of industry. Every country I visit, one item is uh, private sector, must be there. So I'm very happy. Mm. Uh, UNIDO implements a wide range of the projects promoting economic development, but uh, industry is a focus. Because we understand lots of uh, SDG goals. Here, that I understand uh, your national vision, better world, four pillars. And environment is one, women empowerment report. But it's very easy to talk about women empowerment. Yeah, I, I, I'm the women championship. Women champion. Every year I committed three tasks myself. But talk is easy. But I challenge all the people there. I said, you talk about women in work-life balance and 
uh, working environment better. But don't you think about that? People not even have a job, not, uh, cannot make both ends meet, and their kids cannot go to school. So those kind of women, how can we support them? And not in the big city, not in New York, not in Paris. In the rural areas, how many people th think about that? But you need those program, access to the very, very end of the country. S small hydro project, create a small solar, create energy, they can do the job, they can processing the food, and our projects implement, create job training. I visit industrial park in Ethiopia, the Bulilami Industrial Park, I visit one company, and 75% above a young lady. I talked to one young lady, I said, are you happy about job? She said, of course, I'm so happy with job. I, I appreciate that. And I said, what, what do you do after this kind of job? She said, I'm now support, supporting whole family. My whole family, I support them. And of course, she would like to develop skill and moving up with more income. If there's no economic development, friends, there's no opportunity provided for them. Women empowerment may not be so factual. This is uh, what UNIDO is doing, and the environment. We talk about the climate change, global public goods. It is so important. But you need a program, we call it resource efficient and a clean production program. It's a central element in our work. And eco-industrial park we implement. One part is not only just green, it's energy efficiency, resource efficiency. This is a package. When we apply that package, companies saving money from different parts, I visit Vietnam during the Global Environment Facility Council, Council meeting, Assembly meeting. Prime Minister of Vietnam met with me, talked to DG Li Yong, your eco-industrial power in Vietnam, very good. We would like to have second phase. This is a, a trust, this is an encouragement. And the leader mentioned this. It's not an individual talk to us. So this is a, not only one case, two cases, many cases. So we are very happy that uh, now Switzerland, the president of Switzerland came to our 50 years anniversary celebration. She brought a big check, <laughs> 60 million Swiss francs support uh, quality infrastructure. Later on, she supported the eco-industrial park with 12 million Swiss francs once again. Th this is a trust. They believe this kind of operation you need to implement or benefit the country to create mutual trade, not a one-way trade. And also important for them to meet the challenge of the global public goods climate change. And I am very, very happy to report to you. Uh, we improve the resource productivity, environmental performance in 63 developing countries and economies in transition, targeting government, civil society, and business with a particular focus on SME. And the program applies preventive environmental strategies to 
processes, product, products, and services to increase efficiency and reduce the risk to the communities and for the purpose of protect the environment. Uh, UNIDO is currently implementing over 400 projects which directly contribute to the achieving the target goals set by both the Paris Agreement and 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, these range from the UNIDO GEF Global Clean Tech Innovation Program, also supports medium sized enterprises entrepreneurs in developing innovative climate clean energy solutions as a profitable business model and make this business profitable and it has big potential. You cannot expect donor community to contribute money once and once again and we need some of the potentials viability of the business. So uh, I, I, I think I need to cut it short because uh, too many information. In 2017 alone, UNIDO's efforts helped avoid over 155,000 tons of CO2 emissions, which is equivalent to around 30,000 passenger cars driven for one year. UNIDO is committed to enabling the paradigm shift in industrialization in developing countries as a means to build low emission climate resilient society. Because uh, people usually will have a kind of uh, perception. For least developed country, maybe they, they just uh, argued about the industrial development, manufacturing, and the environmental protest side. But look at Ethiopia. When we developed an industrial park, we said, okay, meet the international standard. They said, no, we would like to have a zero emission industrial park. It shocked me. I think it's out of my knowledge. We, we need to talk to Denmark and zero emission cities, villages. And, but they really look at it. The Morocco case I, I talked to you, they look at the new industrial revolution. They're not uh, like an agri processing at low level. So, so uh, uh, we also uh, uh, would like to say the Stockholm Convention, Montreal Protocol, uh, those global treaty protect human health and the environment from the persistent organic pollutants, POP, you, you may know. But, we are implementing that project 23 years. We're implementing the uh, Jeff project close to 20 years since its inception. We are ranked top implementing agency. Uh, Montreal Protocol, we received the award. Only six implementing country and uh, agency received this honor because uh, all the projects we implemented in 25 countries meet the standards before the deadline. Six of them, only one agency. It's a UNIDO, five countries. So uh, I, I think we are focusing on those important area, women empowerment, environment protection, SME development, and also based on the industrial development economic development. Uh, as long being recognized by Ireland, uh, in no small part due to its uh, own historical experience, and uh, is reflected in the better world, many developing countries, uh, economies in transition, particularly those with large rural community suffering from inadequate access of food, lack of employment, the problem is uh, income, uh, incompounded by the uh, dependence on outdated, inefficient technology leading to poor productivity and a slow economic growth. Agro-based industrial products among, uh, account for half of all export for developing countries, yet only 30% of those exports involve the processed goods compared to a figure of 98% in the developing world. 
that, that is a comparison. Uh, visit Ghana, visit Cote d'Ivoire, they have a strong agro-processing. Visit Ghana, they said, they have a food processing, actually it's a food drying process. They have mongoes, pineapple, uh, banana, pipia, and such a big harvest, but people cannot consume them. Rotten on the roadside, but they build uh, some of the processing company. I visit two of them, uh, one of two top top level food processing company, and uh, when I visit there, you see, to my surprise, I was not a very happy feeling because uh, people holding the banana uh, uh, pineapple use a knife to peel the skin. Very skillful, very quick, but very sorry to say, we could have a little bit more advanced equipment in replacing. Lots of pineapples being thrown away because uh, those are a little bit dot and too ripe and lots of waste. And the people carrying big, <laughs> big, big container was a movie. And that one of top two food processing company in the country. And what we can do is not uh, millions of money. Maybe we add uh, some of the little bit of contribution. They will really pick up the farm. I, I, asked how many supplies from so endless, <laughs> endless. So that, that is Ghana. Friends, you know, Ghana is uh, what kind of status in Africa? Middle income country, middle income country. So it's a painful feeling for me to, to say that uh, now Ghana applying for PCP, the president on the venture trip to, to Harvard and to Malta. He instructed vice president to talk to me to let Ghana into PCP. And the president mentioned his slogan is one district, one factory. When I visit Japan, just returned from Japan, Japan said, yes, that's a good idea. We have a one village, one product. One village, one product. So this is a kind of vision, try to have an industrialization. And uh, we also are now moving uh, ahead with uh, some of the support to coordinate with international uh, development agencies and uh, implementing IDDA3, Third Industrial Development Decade for Africa. Uh, in terms of uh, specific actions in Africa, you need to pursue a, a wider range of projects, programs, cross-agency initiatives through the region to promote ISRD, uh, SDG Goal 9, and the best way to address many of the challenges facing by the continent, including uh, PCPs we already mentioned that. And I believe that it is clear from the examples I just mentioned, those countries really moving up with job creation. And when we have a, a kind of ta task to do job creation, people will appreciate you create 20 jobs. And then you create 100 jobs. And what we create jobs it's millions, thousands of millions of jobs. Because it, look at the industrial park. In Ethiopia, how many industrial parks? They did design 70 industrial parks in the country. And one industrial park in Havasa. Havasa is a southern part, poor region. This industrial park completed within nine months, less than one year. And also, this, uh, this industrial park 
in the fourth wing, 90,000 job created. There's only one industrial park. But now they develop. But how many countries try to move ahead with this kind of? Egypt, they would like to seek guidance, support from UNIDO to develop a Suez Canal Special Economic Zone, 492 square kilometers big. And uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Morocco is full. And quite a number of countries. So what uh, we can create for jobs is a big, big number. And if we can move ahead. So I'm very happy look at the future of the industrial development. Fourth industrial revolution as opportunity and challenge. But we actually look at those countries. And UNIDO is uh, implementing this process. And we connected to Hanover Massa. Uh, five years in a row, we are visited Hanover Massa. I try to get a connection <coughs> with our member state. We agreed, we signed an agreement with Hanover Massa that uh, next year we will hosting jointly with the Hanover Massa uh, uh, UAE government, UNIDO for Global Manufacturing Industrialization Summit. We invite all the in, uh, uh, member states, Minister of Industry and Trade, coming to the event, and uh, together connected to the private companies in the Massa. And this is uh, 70 years happened. Chairman Kukla told me, never happened before, but this will be a big event because it's a second is a, our project really connected to the new industrial revolution. For instance, one of the example is a Kenya geothermal project financed by Japanese government. And this project connected to IOT. Their management operation will be connected to the cloud computing and support the operation management. Then scale up the, Kenya is a country ranked number eight for geothermal resources. Number one in utilization of geothermal resources in the world. So this kind of connection to the new industrial revolution technology is very useful. Thirdly, we try to prepare lots of activities Invite Siemens, invite uh, uh, Alibaba, uh, introducing the digitalization, introducing e-commerce to uh, our member countries. So uh, I'm very happy that uh, we receive lots of support from those companies. They really become our partner. I introduced that uh, one of the example, Heineken. <laughs> I talked to Sarah that. Uh, why Heineken would like to work with us? Because uh, the beer distribution line 172 in the world, but now they would like to go to Africa. But two things fundamental, one is water. 95% of beer water. And they should uh, have a conservation of the water. And uh, what treatment of water? Second is energy. Without energy, you drink a warm beer. I don't think people like that. <laughs> yeah. So they become our partner. They, they, so this is a, a kind of uh, important signal that uh, private sector is our important partner. We need to work together with them. So uh, I really would like to mention two meetings uh, this morning give me very big encouragement. Serving our member states is our responsibility. But how to is a big question mark. I talked to you know, Julia Cinnamon, and we have exchange, and uh, we decided to organize a kind of event to connect it to the 
enterprises here in Ireland and to understand more situation about the UNIDO procurement is one, and the Africa business environment, number two. And I had a meeting with uh, Minister Cameron, and he told me he really would like to support this and uh, join some of the important events of UNIDO and also try to support the private sector. And so this is uh, what we actually be encouraged. And this evening I'm going to Shannon. Of course, I would like to bring the Shannon to International Conference on Industrial Park in Lac region. It's an international one. I would like to invite Shenzhen, one of the special economic zone, and after uh, the Chinese leader visit uh, Shannon and to join this international event. And because I still believe that uh, this is uh, relevant, relevant. So tomorrow I, I, I'm going to the uh, Shannon Free Zone and see for myself to meet with uh, some of the genius and uh, fam famous people. Uh, first, first time they met with uh, Chinese delegation. Later on, they received, uh, this gentleman received a Chinese leader. And this time, maybe, they received a, a group of people from UNIDO, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, and uh, which will be uh, very, very uh, Im important for us. So, um, of course, uh, I really uh, would like to mention that uh, uh, we really need to look at what we can do uh, before everything's too late. Uh, it's a world we call from Ireland, I learned a better world. But it needs efforts, need a partnership, need to work together with the international community. And I appreciate today's uh, uh, seminar or forum. Uh, Give me such a long time for me to uh, talk to you, share with you what we are done, what we are going to do, and uh, what we are going to do, in particular in this country. Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, I. Come.